All right, guys, welcome to another pursuit. All right, we're pretty excited about this one. We've been planning this for about a month out in the wild and we're gonna be hunting chickens. We're going to a private farm. We got permission and we've got a guide that's taking us. They've kind of tracked down where the chicken's at. We've actually got to go trek in a little farther to get there, but it's gonna be pretty neat. I haven't seen the local chickens or the local wild chickens. They say it's smaller than a regular chickens. They fly, they, they, they nest and roost into the trees. So what we are gonna do is uh, set some traps. We're gonna go hunt in the evening, go hunt in the morning. We're gonna live off the land. There's papaya, sweet potatoes, a bunch of good stuff out there. And I lied, we're not gonna live off the land. We brought some food, but we will eat off the land and eat some good food and hang out, relax. And we've got the most important part, guys the beer opener. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I got my Sherpa right here in the background. This is going to be a fun one. Let's get on this pursuit, guys. First step of this adventure is to get there. Here we go. Currently setting up camp uh, at the base camp here. So grabbing everything off the truck. Got a little tent up under the shed, parking, cooler. Got everything cleaned up and now we're gonna go on about a two hour hike. There goes the Sherpa running up the hill. straight uphill climb and there's gonna be rough terrain like this throughout the whole place. Start guys. We're headed up there to the forest up there. Get through here pretty quickly because a path has barely been paved before us when he was scouting and we just have to watch out or cobras, snakes. This terrain is not easy. It's actually lots of volcanic rock embedded into the soil. So you gotta really watch your steps or just be careful not to twist an ankle. So let me pick up the pace so we can get there before dark. We gotta hold on to things. And see lawyer, guide. Is like sprinting up. He's got more gear. He's paving the way with his machete, but we're probably a good 20, 15, 20 yards behind him, catching our breath. All right, keep on going. Dripping sweat. The traps are pretty much spring type traps. You bend a branch over for the recoil and spring. You tie a string to it, you create a loop that tightens in itself, and then you put it in the walkways or little paths that you see animals to travel on. So they put some brush around it to kind of guide the animal towards that trap, and then hopefully we'll catch something inside. Hiking through this dark, or this thickness is that there's trees with thorns, like little ones, and they might whip you in the eye if you don't watch out. So you just gotta, Move a little slow and cautiously. Yeah, there's a big chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. Oh. So, our guide set some traps out a little earlier and he's got one in the trap. He was sending more out and I'll show you what they look like in a bit, but. Uh, dang! There it goes. I almost stepped on it. Check that out. So, this trap. A little piece of wood. You can do it. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Ah. So this one looks like it's been trapped over some few hours. Look at this. So my first encounter with a wild chicken. And so there's a certain way that it looks like it's set with a trigger mechanism. And I didn't even realize that was there. So pretty neat. This chicken is definitely smaller. It's like a, a small wild uh, duck 
not the mallards, but the smaller ducks, and it's about that size. The legs aren't very plump, but this one looks beautiful. I mean, look at the, the colors, the eyes. Look how strong. So this one can fly straight up. Mm. Look at the wings on this thing. Like a bird. Look at that. So these are the flight wings. So pretty, the it colors. So far. This is the fun part for me where it's like a mental rest because I get to be fully present and enjoy my time. So we got one on the board. The terrain was tough. It was so hot and it just disintegrated <laughs> Carl's shoes. He's behind the camera. And now uh, we're going to take a little rest and then we're going to go head to the other side. Before the sun gets down, we're going to try to scout an area. Then we're going to stay still, listen for them, and then we're going to go after them at night. So it'll be a night hunt. The pursuit continues. So we were way, way, way up in those forest area right there, setting traps. And it felt like it was a lot farther. But with the terrain, the steepness of the mountain there, it was a workout. So we're gonna go refill on water, charge all of our gear, and we'll be back at it so all right we're at the rest house on the second part of the farm and so there's no electricity or access to water so they actually catch their rainwater if you can see that spout behind me right there that falls into that tank right there bahai kubo so take it take a look by wood they've got the indoor kitchen just in case it's raining They've got a lot of firewood. This is very comfortable in the evening with the wind blowing. Pretty cool. So what are these called? Carabantos. Carabantos. And they eat these like, oh, like string beans. We've regrouped with our guides and we're going to be carrying guns into the night. And what we're looking for is roosting chickens. All right, tribe. All right. We're coming to the area that might have some chickens. So we're going to start whispering and get real quiet here and then hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we come across them. This is just such a refreshing view. Loy, our guide, ran into a couple of chickens and they flew off, but he kind of knows the area that they're roosting, so yeah, yeah. we're going to start heading over there and it is getting dark. Alright, we're back at camp and got real close to getting a chicken. Uh, we found one roosting in a tree and I thought they would travel in. And we heard one, we had to wait about 35 minutes, 45 minutes till it went back in the tree and once it got back in the tree uh, we went under it turned on the light took a shot uh, with uh, iron sights and uh, just just missed it we heard it fly away and then we were looking for for about another 15 20 minutes 30 minutes to see if it was there um, and couldn't find it so one got away so far so good really fun um, and we're gonna we're gonna cook some barbecue tonight. We brought some pork and some, of course, rice's life. And uh, I'm exhausted, but we're gonna do a little bonfire and hang out, so. So the crew is coming. And we're gonna be chilling the rest of the night. Such respect for the guys that do this for fun. Definitely a challenge, I can see why they do it. But anyways, have a time of celebration. Here goes the crew. This is all the farmers that work on the farm, so after work, they decided to come back, check us out, and we're about 8, 9 o'clock at night, and we're going to start popping some beers open and barbecuing and just having a good time. Alright, this is like raining really hard, and the guys are sleeping under they got rain flies and everything but man I'm 
glad that I'm in the car here, but it's going to get uh, pretty wet tonight. So I'm going to take a quick shower and then go to sleep. <sighs> Never thought I'd say this, but I'm freezing in the Philippines. I just took a shower and now I'm cold. <sighs> All right, I'm going to dry off and I'll see you guys in bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. Last night, man, if I can just summarize that experience, it was pretty darn amazing, even though we didn't get any chickens. Uh, it was just beautiful, and it was pitch black. I was like three feet away from them, and I keep repeating it, but it's like trying to file, follow shadows in the dark. Like, yeah, almost impossible, and I just, for me, I just uh, watched them as they flickered like fireflies because they would turn on a low light just to see a couple of steps in front of them and they would go and walk about 10 feet and then after that they'd flash another light and it was just really quick we saw some uh, civet cats that hunt the chickens also so in the area that we went we didn't run into any chickens to take a shot at but anyways it's been a great experience a delicious meal great company and yeah this is a part of the pursuit so we'll see you in a bit. All right, guys. <laughs> so we're gonna cook some rice first because we only got one pot. So we're, as we're getting the rice going, we're gonna finally cook the native chicken that we caught in the trap. We're gonna make a traditional dish called the nola, which is a traditional Filipino dish. It's a soup and there's tomatoes, onions, ginger, native mint, chilies, local molongai and i don't even know the difference in the flavor but this is what they add in there it's kind of neutral salt pepper so this is actually a, a really simple dish but really delicious it's really traditional and tastes really good so my favorite lemongrass and we'll have the guys here so interesting thing is how small these chickens are but it makes sense because uh they're not just fattening up on a farm. So we'll, the skin looks very thin. It's not as uh, thick as the other traditional skins that I've seen so far. Okay. Turning the feather off. Okay. Check this out. The white meat is even darker. Lemongrass goes first, just to extract as much of the flavor out of this as possible. <coughs> it's so small and cute. The ginger. the ginger. So the ginger is a little bit more thick and longer to cook. So we're going to throw the ginger in there. And I love the flavor of the ginger anyways. The lemongrass is super strong. The ginger comes through, but right behind all that. Huh? All right, we'll throw in the softer vegetables. Native <coughs> mint, local mint, <coughs> chilies, <coughs> onions. Tomatoes. Yeah, the broth just is shining now. And then I'm gonna take first sip if you guys don't mind. All right, so this is wild chicken tanola. It's hot. Mm. Good depth of flavor. It does, but the flavor of the chicken, it tastes like it just seeped out, like almost like a, a not depth in the meat of taste of uh, chicken but definitely chewier. And then the soup. Oh, man, that's good. That is, the spice is perfect. The pepper hits up front and then it finishes off with the spice of the chilies. Now, I don't know how it did it, but the mulungai leaves brought out the broth and the, the umami of the chicken of, or the fat of the chicken. All the flavor has gone into the soup. The skin, it's not as fatty it's actually thinner membrane oh so good but the bones the bones are so hard all right now we know i think on a blind taste test i would be able to know what a wild chicken tastes like <laughs> yeah my favorite part and the words that i know the best is <laughs> all right guys thank you for watching this up to here <laughs> Ka
we were gonna call it a day wild chicken we were able to get one which was a blessing it was delicious the bones are super hard thank you to our guide mr saloy the magic that happened yuck we did it yeah we did it <laughs> thanks for following on this one off to the next pursuit pursuit of coconuts guys if you guys haven't please subscribe like and i know you hear us all the time but this one's different because that the more that you do the more money we're able to raise for the social enterprise we'll look forward to the next one peace